Hello, my name is Ivy. I'm a fourth year social work student at Toronto Metropolitan University. I'm currently completing my placement with the Organization for a Safer Space. Today, I will be talking about stress. In this video, we'll first look at what stress is. We'll then look at the types of stress, some statistics, risk factors, effects, treatment, and lastly, we'll look at some coping strategies. What is stress? Stress is the physical or mental response to an external cause. People perceive issues as threatening or dangerous when they do not believe to have adequate resources to cope with the situational demands. Stress occurs when hormones surge throughout the body, causing people to sweat, breathe quicker, tense their muscles, and prepare to take action. When this occurs, the flight or fight response is activated for protection. Stress is a regular component of life. Mild stress can help people increase motivation and productivity, meet deadlines, and arrive on time for events. Mild stress can lead to an improvement in cognitive function, including verbal memory. However, prolonged and overbearing stress can increase the risk for physical and psychological problems. There are three main types of stress, chronic stress, acute stress, and episodic stress. People who have prolonged and overwhelming stressors can have chronic stress disorder. Some common signs of chronic stress include frequent headaches, low self-esteem, sleeping problems, extreme or unusual irritability, difficulty concentrating on daily tasks, and feelings of helplessness. Over time, without treatment, people with chronic stress may develop other conditions, including heart disease, anxiety disorders, memory disorders, depression, and digestive disorders. Acute stress disorder is a continuing response to a one-time stressor. A person can carry tension into the following days or weeks. Similar to chronic stress, acute stress has physical and emotional symptoms, such as anxiety, trouble sleeping, irritability, and less awareness of their surroundings. Episodic acute stress occurs when a person feels intense stress in response to mundane stressors, which can include a missed deadline for work or school. Some common signs of episodic acute stress disorder are irritability, rapid heartbeat, panic attack, heartburn, and gastrointestinal issues, as well as muscle pain. If left untreated, it can lead to bigger health issues, including heart disease, hypertension, and frequent headaches. Statistics. In a 2021 survey, 20.4% of Canadians stated that they have a lot of life stress. They perceived that most days in their lives were stressful. There are five life areas that can promote stress. These five areas are physical environment, such as traffic, noise, or unsafe living conditions, family and relationships, which can include marital disagreements, rebellious teenagers, or taking care of an ill family member, life situations, including financial issues, discrimination, unemployment, and isolation, major life changes, including a newborn baby, a career change, divorce, or moving homes, and lastly, work, which can include an extensive workload, job dissatisfaction, inadequate pay, and workplace conflicts. Everyone experiences stress differently, as the intensity, duration, and frequency can vary. There are several factors that can amplify stress. This can include when people have inadequate social support, numerous stressors, problems with emotional regulation, difficulty enduring uncertainty, low self-confidence or belief of their inability to cope, and negative interpretation of the stressor, causing them to feel hopeless. Effects. Long-term stress can lead to numerous neuropsychiatric illnesses, such as depression, anxiety, phobias, panic, adjustment disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Stress can also increase the risk of substance abuse, sleep problems, muscle tension, gastrointestinal problems, high blood pressure, a weakened immune system, cardiovascular disease, and stroke. 
treatment. To manage stress, people can attend support groups, stress management programs, or seek therapy from a healthcare professional. A popular form of therapy is cognitive behavioral therapy, which can help people identify unhealthy stress and use coping strategies to manage their reactions. People with severe stress may be recommended medication from a psychiatrist. Lifestyle changes are also recommended for stress management. Coping strategies. Finding what causes one's stress and appropriate coping techniques can improve one's daily life. To deal with stress, one must problem solve. The steps to problem solving are to identify the problem, set goals, write a list of solutions, select a solution and take action, and track progress. To avoid stress from daily tasks, it is important to organize and prioritize tasks. Having a daily planner, whether physical or digital, can help keep people on track and avoid necessary stress. Talk to others and seek support from family, friends, co-workers, classmates, or community members can be beneficial to relieve stress. Other daily activities that can help reduce stress are exercise, getting enough sleep, eating healthy, and prayer. If the symptoms of stress have been prolonged, affects your daily functioning, and you are struggling to cope, it may be time to seek help from a professional. Feel free to check out the organization for a safer space at forasaferspace.org, where you can have access to accessible, affordable, and affirming mental health care with licensed mental health professionals. Thank you for watching and have a great day.